Hey, this is Kelly Lemieux from Buck Cherry, and you're watching for BassPlayersOnly.com. Hi, everyone. John Liebman here. You're watching for BassPlayersOnly.com, where people learn bass despite sore muscles, creaky bones, and getting older. We have a very fun guest this week, a special guest, Kelly Lemieux. You may know him from uh, Goldfinger. He played with Dave Mustaine, Paul Gilbert. Can't forget the Electric Love Hogs. And longtime bass player, of course, with Buck Cherry. Hello, Kelly. How are you? I'm good. I, I, I'm in beautiful uh, downtown Cheyenne, Wyoming today. I got a day off. so what? I got that going for me. When I was driving across the country one time and I drove through, was it Laramie, Wyoming, somewhere, and it was in the middle of the night and I came across this amazing jazz station on the radio. This was before oh, wow. satellite and this was like 1991 or something like that. So nice. So uh, that's my memory of Wyoming. Ter terrestrial jazz radio. Terrestrial radio. I remember that. Yes. Well, Me too. I want to talk about you and bass and stuff, and uh, let's 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 go from the beginning. You are from Oregon, not Oregon, well, Oregon, right? Is that where you were originally? That, you know what? Surprisingly enough, my so I was actually born in Oregon, um, and then we moved to Minnesota. So I spent all of the seventies in Minnesota. My first day of class in seventh grade, I just moved there. And uh, everybody gets a little paragraph to read. And it was my turn. And I just stepped right in the biggest pile of improperly enunciated word. And, and I was, uh, Lewis and Clark discovered the Oregon Trail. And before I could even finish the sentence, every head whipped around and went, Oregon! Well, and, you of, of all people in that room should have known, right? Well, we would only visit during the summer. Okay. So, and you know, I was 12. I, don't know. I just remember going, going home and telling my mom, how, she's like, how was your first day of school? And I was like, oh, I, I have to get rid of this accent. And, and I, have to, I have to get rid of this accent and not say pop anymore. Yeah. Um, and I have to start wearing these really horrible dungaree jeans that everybody wore there. There were so like the lawmans and you put your goody comb in the pocket, which is kind of where I started playing bass around that whole ugly era of fashion. You know what but, I um, used to wear to school? This was a, around third ooh, grade. Tell me. A mod, a mod belt. Have you ever heard I of love a, mod, it. a mod belt? It, it's is is did you wear it on the outside of your well, yeah just like a regular belt but it was really thick this was probably oh know, 1968 something like i that. still wear thick belts what's up yeah so i'm sorry you were so traumatized but let's let's oh, talk no, about that's cool the, the I, I, it's like i ended up ruling that school by the end of by eighth grade year I'd start, I was in a band. I played on the football team. I ruled that place. So. What position did you play in football? I was, well, back then I was big. You I, was, a lineman, um, I, bet, huh? I was a tight end and fullback and I played defensive end. Okay. Wow. And then my, I didn't play my freshman year and everybody grew and I came back and I played sophomore, the rest of the sophomore, junior, senior, um, always the smallest dude. And, um, I got switched to cornerback and punt return. So I was like the little itty bitty guy. I went from, I've been this tall since I was 12. Okay. Well, I can't so, tell how tall you are, but. Uh, well, if anybody else, I'm six, four, but really I'm five, seven. Okay. There you go. <laughs> Let's talk about your musical upbringing and your initial exposure to music. What was that like? Do you come from a musical family to where your parents playing records, brothers and sisters, you know, stuff like that? No, I was the oldest. Um, I had uh, my dad was a notorious, excellent dancer, evidently in Faribault, Minnesota, where he was from there. And um, I think his mother, my grandma Lemieux, I think she played piano, but not not really. Um, I always and it's weird, too, is I always had a, I always had the fascination for bass, not guitar. I always started out. I always wanted to play bass and I, and I, and, and uh, I just remember being, gosh, I don't know, seven or eight. And there was like one record, it was a record store and a music store in Faribault. 
uh, where I grew up. And um, I remember walking, you know, how they hang on the wall. They'll just put like a hook and they'll put the guitar on the wall. Yeah. And I just remember like, like, like exactly. I have three feet away from me right now. Exactly. So I just remember going plink, plink, plink on the guitar strings. Yeah. And then I'd walk up and just hit that E string just once. And the windows would start shaking real quiet. And, and my, my buddy, uh, I lived on the street. So we were kind of out, out of the city limits and everybody went to different schools. So I actually had like a bunch of guys that were my age, younger, older, and um, my buddy, Mark Steinberg, across the street from me, he's a year older than me. He, I think I was probably 10. He gave me Kiss Alive 1. And I just remember hearing Gene Simmons' bass at the beginning of it going, Badoo, Badoo, <laughs> Badoo, 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 Badoo. And I was just like, and you know, the, the, the speakers are rattling and the windows are moving. And I'm like, that's it. Whatever that is, that's the one. Wow. So I was always, I love guitar too. Don't get me wrong, but there's just something so like earth moving about your bass is just omnidirectional. You know what I mean? I do know it's what like, you mean. <laughs> you know what I, I know. You know what I mean? I see those speakers back there, whatever's yeah. going on. And <laughs> who were some of your other bass influences? Well, uh, Gene, probably without knowing it, um, there was a lot of guys without me really knowing it. And then when I started playing, I was like, oh, oh I like these guys. Um, I would say an early one would probably be Tom Peterson from Cheap Trick. Ah. Uh, the 12-string bass. Yep. Uh, when, um, when Live at Budokan came out, this is kind of where I was really starting to form. I mean... That I heard that uh, I want you to want me was all over the radio, yes, all over the radio, and I remember hearing that. And then I would, I, you know, you go to the record store, and like back then, it was just like really everything was very tactile as much as it was aural. You know, you just be like, I remember just going and buying records because I like the way they looked. You know what I mean? I'm like, well, you can do that now again. <laughs> Who'd have thunk it? You huh? can, you can, and I love that. Yeah. Um, it's really nice. Uh, Cause when the, the first product I ever, my first band, everything was on CD. And I remember thinking, man, it's never going to be as cool. And then every once and again, somebody asks you, which is still weird for your autograph. And you're like, gosh, I wonder what it'd be like to actually sign vinyl and not like this tiny little CD where everybody's got to sneak their name on. So it's pretty awesome. Uh, you, but you I bypassed the cassette era, huh? Um, I, you know what? The first thing I ever bought, speaking of, early and cheap trick and all that stuff. Um, I bought on eight track Ace Frehley's solo CD or yeah. CD. I see. I say CD yeah. eight track. I bought that. No, no. I bought Ace on vinyl and I bought the monkey's greatest hits. Wow. The monkey's greatest hits on, I, on eight track. I worked with Davy Jones in florida he was in uh he was in a broadway show oliver but he was too old to play Oliver. of course he played fagan but he was it was fun by well, the I'll way bet he did play oliver when he was oh yeah he did when he was when he was little well when i'll he bet young. he did when he was younger yes yeah. he did he did by the way i played tom peterson's 12 string bass it was how long ago oh boy i don't know five seven years ago so we're talking he's describing the bass and he's, he says you want to play it I said, yeah. So it was fun. And I, I started slapping I on it too, which was <laughs> just, oh, it's funny. Just like that. It's funny. Yeah. So, um, um, and I just remember thinking, that's the bass. Wow. And you just listen to it and it's so thick, which probably is why I like that Tech 21 Doug Pinnock pedal because it's oh, yeah. kind of got that. I, I love that thing. It's very, Doug's, Doug, well, Doug started out, he was playing a lot of Hammer 12 strings too. Tell me about the the rest of your gear. What are, you're a you're a Spectre guy, aren't you? I yeah, I am a Spectre guy. I mean, I guess this is the only affiliated tattoo I have on my body is the Spectre one. So I guess I am. I love Spectre. That's not They're the awesome. first thing that caught my eye on your fingers when you were doing that. I, I what's was that? Look, I was looking at your ring there. There you go. <laughs> I love gear. I do. So yeah, I'm a longtime Spectre guy. I love Spectres. Um, they actually did um they did a model for me um that i th i'm waiting for more info to come out before i 
but it's really cool. We, it was in conjunction with um, Rock and Roll Relics, which is a guitar company that's my other, my guitar, one of my guitar players, Billy Rao. Uh, Billy has, and it was like kind of a uh, Spectre Rock and Roll Relic. So I have like the first ever relic Spectre, ba- like, you know, relic, not an, like, not like Doug Wimbish's beat up Spectre. Like his is a, is a real one, even though Billy did a killer job on it, man. It looks amazing. So um, love that. Um, the Tech 21, Doug Panic pedals. Awesome. I love that thing. Yeah, I have talk to me them. about that because I've interviewed Doug about, I don't know, three or four times and a whole bunch of Tech 21. I've never heard a negative word about Tech 21 or the Sans Amp or any of their stuff. No, their stuff's great. It's really good. You know, there's a lot of, I mean, thank God, finally, people are starting to I mean, I know there's the original Sans amp. What is it? The bass driver. That thing's always sound killer. But like now with the uh, multi switching of the channels, you can add the distortion and really dial in. You're just there's a lot of really good companies. I really like Doug's pedal. I think it's I've heard the Getty. I've heard the um, Steve Harris one. They all sound great. But that Doug one kind of got his classic. I like that crunch on top of my clean tone. Which is why I like Tom Peterson too, because he's gets to clean and he gets to crunch, which goes back to the ox, John Entwistle, who is, you know, doing the uh yeah, doing the 15s and the 12s and the 10s with three different channels and blending them all in and pissing off the singer and you know, making the guitar player even more deaf. So, yeah. but yeah, yeah, I love that. I love the uh I love that uh I like a little bit of crunch on top of my, my clean. What's keeping you busy these days? You're in the middle of a tour, right? Uh, we're on this year. <clears throat> Last night in Denver, we played show 103 of, on the year. So I've been pretty busy. And that's just this year. We started this tour cycle. Our, 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 uh, our record, uh, we just put a record out, uh, came out June last year. So we're touring for that still at the tail end of that. Um, hellbound record <clears throat> and um yeah we went out with alice cooper this year which was amazing um yeah we've just been going 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 we're gonna get a little break in mid-september we get actually get like a real break and then we're gonna do the kiss cruise back to gene Woo! that guy's the king of the bass slides man Woo! i just like all day man i was just kind of want to sample those and when somebody calls me that'll be my ringtone but um yeah we're 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 doing that and then we're gonna go i think we're gonna do another record at the end of the year we're going to australia new zealand we're doing the kiss cruise uh busy 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 we don't stop man even during the pandemic we wrote a record and recorded a record and we're just like you know what we use that time really like i know a lot of people lost their minds and you know, I was, I'm all about prosper, not perish. So we, we got busy, man. We get busy. Let's talk about playing bass. I want to ah. touch on your technique first for a second. I, I know that you, you do play with a pick once in a while or sometimes or, but, but. I, Depends I on the song. My philosophy is whatever works for the tune. I don't care because I've heard some bass players that play fabulous with the pick and i wouldn't want them to play with their fingers and vice versa i have there's finger players that like i don't need to hear them play with the pick i don't care i don't want to um so i started out with the pick and then i took three lessons and one of those was like real bass players don't use a pick and i was like but what about tom peterson and what about you know, Chris Squire. And what about, you know, I mean, the list Paul McCartney, goes Carol Paul King, McCartney, David Carol McCartney, Carol Ellison. Thank you. Keep going. You know, Bobby Vega. Oh my God. Oh, oh exactly. Oh. Exactly. That guy's a freak with his weird circular accents and the, and I'm just like, Oh man. Awesome. Yeah. Yeah. That guy's great for sure. Um, so I played forever with my fingers and then I got the gig with uh, this punk band fear and and when i got the gig uh lee the the singer the main founding dude was like he's like okay he goes you have to do everything with the pick and i'm like no problem and he goes it's got to be all down strokes so i sat up being a huge fear fan i already had the arrangements in my head which was great so i had to sit down and like 
some of it obviously was like back and forth or circular, but for the most part, and I was like, well, why has it got to be downstrokes? And he goes, because after a while, you can you start tensing up and the forearm starts and he goes, and you can feel the pain and the tension in the music. And I was like, that sounds stupid. But then I got out on tour and I was like, yep, there it is. <laughs> there it is. The wheels are just slightly starting to come off, but you're hammering through it. Like he I, actually busted, busted me a couple of times. Cause I was just like, Oh, my forearms killing. I had to raise my base. Like, like I had to literally like raise it to like, Cause it was just all like, gah, 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 gah. like it was like, I almost had to like Marty Friedman that come from underneath yeah, just to hammer it out. I, so, I, wouldn't have, I wouldn't have said this to him, but I would have thought, you know, well, shouldn't that be my problem? Not, not your problem. As long as I'm delivering, why are you worried about my hand getting tensed up? I'm here to deliver the music the way it needs to be played for the song. And if I get tired, that's, that's my issue. That's not your issue. I would have part of the that that's part of the punk legacy and fear was a seminal punk rock band. I don't call myself a punker. I just, you know, um, cause I listened to metal. I was a metal head in high school, but I also listened to Prince. I listened to Duran Duran. I love John Taylor. I was listening to Jocko. I mean, you know, my favorite band when I was like 13, 14, I, man, I think there's a 10th grade picture of me in like a, a white V neck sweater and a Van Halen necklace. I got to dig out somewhere. So I love David Lee Roth and Eddie Van Halen. And then when I heard Billy Sheehan, I was just like, what is that? You know, who plays with his fingers, you know, yeah. Michael Anthony did both, you know, he okay. went back and forth. We get uh, more and more people coming to for bass players only every day to learn bass. Good. On, on, on online bass instruction. And most of the people that I'm attracting are men in their 50s, 60s, 70s. They're not trying to be rock stars or make a career in music. They just they just want to play bass. They just want to play bass. They want to play some rock riffs with their buddies, some some blues shuffles, some walking bass lines, maybe some funk R and B. Uh, and a lot of them have arthritis and tendinitis and those types oh, yeah. of things. So I'm just I'm just trying to set the scene for you here because I wanted to ask you what advice you have for someone like that who wants to learn bass what do you think they should be thinking about focusing on concentrating on um well i'd say the fun factor first um learn songs that you like that are like in like not too complicated which is why you know i think acdc is always cool um you know nirvana is pretty cool um i would say go for songs or you know just like some of the classic stuff that they like um, as far as being older, because because if you get hooked into it and you're like, this is fun and I could jam with my bros and whatnot, because let's face it, there's not a lot of bass players. Man, you know, bass, you're going to play in every group, man, you're going to be playing all the time. Also, with getting old and having creaky bones and, you know, 20 pound basses, you know, <laughs> and, and, and all that fun stuff. Um, Medium scale bases are a really good way to go. That'd be 32. And then I recently got a little short scale um, Gibson tribute bass. And I think Spectre makes a, a, a short scale also. It's 30 or 31. Um, those are really cool. If you've got issues with hands, arthritis, all that fun stuff, you get a short scale bass. It's a really cool. And surprisingly, you can, you can get a nice little thump out of those bad boys too. Um, you know, uh, Jack Bruce played those short scale, um, what was it? An EB, whatever it was called an SG, but it was an EB one or whatever it is. Um, also a really cool route to go. Kelly, tell me, how is your health? I know you had a, uh, a health scare, let's call it uh, several years back. How are you doing? You look great. You look marvelous. You look, it's better to look good than to feel good. And you look marvelous. I don't mean really to crystal. make light of this because it's, it's no, very no, no. serious, but you look, you look good. And thank was, you. Was it AML, I, I, leukemia? It was AML acute myeloid leukemia. I was dying. I had, I had a six day break in between tours. I wasn't feeling good for like a whole month. I did a whole tour we did with, um, Blackstone Cherry. I vaguely remember the tour. I was sick every other day. You know, all, I just like thought I had like some Euro bug I couldn't get rid of. Had a six day break. 
I got home um, Saturday or Sunday. Monday, I went in, got my panels done. Tuesday, I went and got a root canal. Wednesday, I was like, man, I'm getting ready to leave. These suckers better call me back pretty soon. I got to leave. And man, I did not feel good. And then you, you get that phone call. Hi. And they do that rope dopa This is, you know, Marsha from uh, Providence. If we have your test results in from your blood, we would love for you to come in and talk about it. And that's when I just go, not good, not good. I remember looking at my girl at the time going, not good. So anyways, uh, I went in there and they like, they're all happy and happy and skippy dippy. And then they just go, so let's talk about your test results. And then just stare at you for like a minute before you go, all right, just tell me what it is. Anyways, long story longer. I was uh, in the hospital the next day, getting a bone marrow biopsy. It put me on two bags of chemo right off the bat. I was in there for a month, five weeks straight. I went into remission four weeks into the damn shit, excuse my French. Uh, um, and then I had three more outpatients over the course of about four months. And then I was back on tour five months later, no hair, ready to roll. Wow. I was set up to win. I had a great doctor, a guy named John Godwin, who just retired. I was young. I was in good shape. You know, I don't drink. So it's like, I didn't have to like go in and get chemo and then go through like alcohol withdrawals or any weird stuff. Um, you know, I, I just hunkered down, did what I had to do, made my peace and was like, you know what? I'm either going to make it or I'm not. Let's fucking do this. And I just nutted up and did it. And six years later, I'm here talking to you. Very inspirational story, Kelly. Thank you for sharing that. Thank you for asking. What would you be if you were not a bass player? It's something oh, outside of music. I hate to think about that. Oh, I don't know. Probably, you know, work at a haberdashery or something, sell shoes. I don't know. What are the hours? Right? <laughs> uh, you know, like, uh, I don't, you know, that's such a great question. And I've been so, so fortunate to have still be playing music at my advanced age that, um, I don't know. I'm, I'm thinking probably something art or photography or I don't know something already. All I know is I couldn't live in a cubicle. Couldn't do it. Can't do it. Yeah. The only cubicle I can live in is my bunk on the bus. That's the only cubicle for me. There you go. Well, I'm so, glad things worked out the way they did Kelly. Thank you. Keep it up. That. And uh, you, you must be so happy to be back out on the road again, although you made good use of the time when you could. We did. Most of it. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm always grateful to be working. I mean, well, good luck with the rest of the tour. Have fun. I got a buddy over in New Zealand. So say hello to, to Tom. I shall. It's Tom, Tom to with, come to Tom with two M's. <laughs> Tom with two M's. I'll be looking for you, Tom with two M's. Thanks so much for getting together. I'm really glad we hooked up. I was excited about it. I was looking forward to it. And I'm so glad we had a few minutes to sit down. Thank you for having me, John. Thank you. With our special guest this week, Kelly Lemieux. I'm John Liebman, founder and first baseman of ForBassPlayersOnly.com, where people learn bass despite sore muscles, creaky bones, and getting older. Thanks once again to our special guest, Kelly Nemue. I'm John Liebman. We'll see you all next week. In the meantime, let's play bass.